Arrakis, Dune, Desert Planet. Found only on this world is the precious Spice Melange. Guarding this treasure like dragons in tales of old are the mighty sandworms. Although much of Arrakis is dominated by these fearsome beasts, there are a few areas in which they cannot travel. As such, these areas prove to be safe havens from the threat of sandworm incursions. One such area, located in the far northern latitudes, is home to all the imperial cities of the planet. Historically, the largest settlement which serves as the capital and governmental seat of power is the city of Arrakeen. In this video, I'd like to talk about Arrakeen, its history, and its role in Frank Herbert's Dune Saga. Spoiler warning as I will be discussing events and developments from across the entire Dune series. The city of Arrakeen sits on a mass of bedrock. This bedrock, in tandem with the protection afforded by a mountainous, rocky geographic feature called the Shield Wall, provides protection for the city from sandworm attacks. It also mitigates much of the force of the planet's devastating sandstorms. In its earlier years, Arrakeen consisted of a relatively primitive settlement built on the Shield Wall, southeast of the city of Carthag. Prior to the arrival of the Atreides on Arrakis, the palace located at Arrakeen served as the residence of the Emperor's right-hand man, Count Hasimir Fenring, and his wife, Margot. During this time, the Atreides' rival, House Harkonnen, maintained the planetary fief from the city of Carthag for a span of roughly 80 years. This city was built by the Harkonnen soon after their arrival on Arrakis, and although Arrakeen would remain the capital in name, Carthag was established as the seat of power during their rule. Carthag was so unsightly in its design, however, that the imperial planetologist Pardo Kynes likened it to a pustule on the surface of the planet. Once the Padishah Emperor Shaddam IV ordered a change of fief, placing House Atreides in control of Arrakis, Duke Leto chose to move the seat of government from Carthag back to the city of Arrakeen. In Herbert's first book, the Atreides rely on a large shield generator for additional protection over the city. While such technology would serve to enrage the mighty sandworms if used in the open desert, the protection afforded to Arrakeen by means of the local geography prevented any such sandworm attacks. While Carthag was larger, newer, and more densely populated, the Duke, with the advice of his mentat Thufir Howitt, determined that Arrakeen would be easier to defend and, as opposed to Carthag, was less likely to contain as many Harkonnen agents. Apart from serving as a governmental base of operations, Arrakeen was also a center of trade with off-world groups and individuals, as well as a gathering point for a few of the native Fremen who sought to live a more cultured or exotic life. Arrakeen had seen steady growth and development leading up to the start of Frank Herbert's series, and throughout the saga would continue to undergo transformations as the powers of the universe and control of Arrakis changed hands. After Paul Atreides assumed the title of Emperor, he established Arrakeen as the new capital of the Imperium, relocating it from the Carino world of Kaitain. It was during Paul's reign as Emperor that he ordered the construction of a massive keep in Arrakeen, which would be the single largest known structure in all of human history. The construction of this keep was financed by the spice trade and accomplished by the hands of workers who had been transported to Arrakis from worlds that had been conquered by the Fremen's interplanetary jihad. Additionally, entire structures were transported in highliners to Arrakeen from various conquered planets in order to be implemented into the design and layout of this palace. The structure of the keep was expansive, containing many reception halls, ceremonial rooms, and formal meeting places, as well as an entire wing for Paul's personal guard and an intersection for communications. In Dune Messiah, this fortress is described as being large enough to enclose a dozen ancient cities. In the Dune Encyclopedia, it is detailed that a room was built far below the structure to serve as housing for a small stunted sandworm surrounded by a water moat from which Paul could extract spice essence, amplifying his ability to see the future. This massive building featured Ixian handiwork, including lighting and doors augmented with Ixian machinery. 
Altogether, it was stated that the entirety of the Atreides' attendants and their families, amounting to some 35 million individuals, were housed comfortably in the palace annex. Anyone entering the grand reception hall of the Imperial Palace would feel dwarfed by its never-before-conceived immensity. In this hall sat the Imperial Throne, a seat carved from a massive, single green emerald which had previously been the most prized possession of a conquered planet. During this time, Paul also had a two-kilometer wide temple built for his sister Aaliyah. In Frank Herbert's description of this temple, he noted the sweeping curves leading one's eyes up to the transcendent symbols dedicating this temple to Saint Aaliyah of the Knife. He describes the Sun Sweep Window, which incorporates every solar calendar known to human history in the one translucent display whose brilliant colors, driven by the Sun of Dune, thread through the interior on prismatic pathways. Certainly, this temple was a sight to behold, and a complement to the monstrous structure that was Paul's mighty keep. These buildings serve to inspire fear and awe, and to command a level of reverence and respect for the great power wielded by the Emperor and the Atreides family. After the rise of the God Emperor Leto II, Arakeen was transformed into a festival city known as On. It was then used explicitly for the worship of Leto II, who had become a tyrannical ruler. After the God Emperor's death, the city fell under the control of the priesthood who continued to worship him as their deity. Their continued presence in Arakeen helped to maintain its status as a center of politics until long after the destruction of the Imperium, with the Bene Gesserit, the Fish Speakers, and other groups maintaining a presence there in various forms. In the centuries after the death of Leto II, the city became known simply as Keen, and served as the home for the priesthood of Rakis. Eric Keen serves as the setting for many of the events that unfold in the early parts of the series, and is the stage for some of the most memorable battles to be found in the pages of Frank Herbert's Dune Saga. But I'm curious to know what you think of Eric Keen. Is there a particular feature or phase in the evolution of the city that you find most interesting? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more Dune and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support. And as always, have a very nerdy day.